plumbers videos. My name's Alan Hart. In today's video, I've got some clips that have been sent in from Elliot from eFry Gas Services. And there's quite a lot of clips today, all different clips for all different things. Um, so yeah, it's a really interesting video. As always, if you can put a thumbs up on the video, really appreciate that. And yeah, and add a comment, add a comment below. Let's go see Elliot. In today's episode of We Love Alan, we have the reason we need to check pipes, i.e. if you're going between condensed pipes into sink wastes or things like that. So this one has got an old copper sink waste. So if you haven't done the survey or the people not doing the survey correctly, or if you are doing the survey, just make sure you're checking things before you think, oh, I'll turn into the sink waste because it's all internal. Have a look and see what's what. Because if you don't and you find a copper sink waste that you were going to tee into the sink waste, well, you can't. <laughs> and then this copper waste goes right the way through into the bathroom behind into a cast um, stack, which really are not meant to tee into cast stacks because obviously the, um, the condensed pipe is acidic. Now you could put a neutralizer on it, but as we all know, who actually changes the neutralizers every 12 months or within every 12 months. Don't quote me on all these regs, read the instruction booklets and read the um, regulations in force at the time, but just a heads up, especially to newbies out there. Um, you're getting straight out there. Let's not uh, put yourself up the creek and cost yourself loads of money. All right, just a little bit of attention, pay attention to what's going on, but I mean, look how old this setup is in here. It's amazing. And also to those training, there's the gas meter, there's a sink. Is there anything wrong with that or not? Just a quick one. Hey, hey, just a quick one. Hopefully this comes in useful. If you're doing a glow em energy, valent pure, or any of the similar type heat exchanger type boilers and you've got the combi boiler, it's so much easier to whip the uh, expansion vessel out because it gives you all this space to get to that back nut there. Oh, focus has gone yet again. Um, it does make it a lot easier. You can do it with the expansion vessel in, but if you're doing a service or doing this work anyway, you're gonna check the expansion vessel. If you're gonna decharge the boiler, you may as well just undo the one nut that's not done up very tight. These washers are really cheap to buy, so keep a load on the van. It becomes a pack of 20 or something ridiculous anyway. Um, so yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to get to that one there. And the seal comes with a two-part seal. That's the old one. Um, silicon and a graphite. I've not yet seen one of them fail but then these boilers are only six years old now are they about six years old the very um very first ones released so they shouldn't have gone um but nonetheless um hopefully that helps a few people out cheers how well that's going to hold up i don't know it'll probably fall over but let's give this a little hit okay move that light uh, okay let's see how we get on <laughs> Look at that, straight in. Annoying them right up against a piece of wood there. But <laughs> Sod's law, but I can drill from the other side and make it happen. But yeah, that's a nice neat finish. There we go, happy days, winner, winner. Thank you, uh, thank you to Condensate Pro. Cheers, Dave. Okay, so today's job, it's Monday. Floor standing board are out that's been condemned. Flue system out, hot water cylinder out, which we're just draining out at the moment. Get rid of all this nonsense, we're changing over to a combi, because the customer wants a combi in this, this property. We're going for quite a large combi because there are there's um, a bath, a shower above it, and a separate shower, and four people living here. Um, tanks in the loft space here, beautiful old valves. Blue ones, look, the right colour. It's great, isn't it? Um, so cold water storage system, F and E tank, that'll all be coming out. All this will be coming defunct. I think all the pipe work rises into each bathroom, but we'll have a little look. Um, yeah, it does by the looks of things. There's the old flu system, so that will come out. And for those of you training, do you see anything wrong with this flu? This is an IL flu. 
I think it's IL. Yeah, it's IL. Um, or Selkirk is the name. Do you see anything wrong with it? So, as a part of the importance with of doing, get jumping in the loft when you're doing servicing and landlords gas safety checks. But do you see anything wrong with that? Let's try and get my camera back here. Anything wrong with anything on that flue? Or is it all fine? Could all be fine? Could all be wrong? Comment below. It's just a quick one for all the uh, trainees or newbies or people who haven't seen it before. But these Drayton three port valves, right, pull it off, pull it out. There we go. These Drayton valves, if you see these and they're wired into these and you've got a problem with the three port valve, you don't only need to replace the valve, you need to redo the wiring centre because these have got. Um, Brain's gone, it's Monday morning. Um, the switch is inside, the, um, the mic switch is inside. They are not compatible with any of the three port valve apart from these ones. And these have been defunct for many years. So if you do come to do a three port valve, or you get a fault on this type of wiring center here, you need to price for a three port valve wiring center and a rewire and everything. So send us that, the full works. Um, so don't cut yourself out because if you think you can do it and you're given a price you can end up swallowing up swallowing up a lot of money so just a heads up really hopefully that helps a few people out just a super quick one for um people who are newly qualified or an apprenticeship <clears throat> or those that are qualified gas and starting to do a little bit of plumbing on the side um, not having done an apprenticeship or anything like that this video is going to seem very very obvious to um those that have been in the game for a little while or short while but just a quick one if you've got a leak from a shower tray or a bath don't always assume it's going to be the waste pipe do some little obvious checks like looking for the grout bits of grout missing anything like that because more often than not what i personally find is baths haven't been siliconed in shower trays haven't been siliconed in you've got bits of grout missing and there's cracking on the silicon so rather than starting ripping out beneath the floor to have a look where the leak's coming from do your checks above, nice obvious bits. Nice short video, hopefully it helps a few of you out. Very simple, but a few people I know have never looked. Cheers. So there we go. Um, old floor stain ball is out. New pipe work in, filters up there because it's nicer to be out the way out than the, at the boiler. We fitted a new 35 kilowatt glow worm combi. Um, customer wanted a combi, it was the cheaper option. So we put that in, but I have range rated this down because um, we do not need, I think it gives 25 kilowatts worth of heating. We don't need that. So I've range rated that down to um, 16 kilowatts just to see how it gets on. Because it's a bit of a funny system, um, the way it's piped under the floors we've sussed out. And it seems to be performing really well. So I'm going to try and take that down to sort of 14-ish kilowatt. The pipe work under the floors is not lagged. So it's losing heat all the time. That's just the nature of older, older properties. We can see the little floorboards we did take up. Yes, in the perfect world. I'd like the whole house, but customers haven't got an endless bucket of money. So, um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can range it down a bit further. Standoff bracket, which gives you about 55 mil ish, um, which is really good. I've run all of my hot colds in 22 mil as well, straight off the boiler. Straight off the boiler in 22 mil, increased it, increased it. These need a bit of a polish up. Um, just to keep the flow rates nice and high because it's a combi, it's got a bathroom with a basin in there. It's got a separate ensuite with a basin and shower in there and got the kitchen sink. And it performs really, really well to be fair. The only time as you get with most combi boilers that it starts to, um, you see it drop off, is when you're running the bath tap full bore and then you're trying to run another hot tap. It still comes out of the kitchen sink, but it really is reduced. But it can run basins, showers, at the same time as everything else and it seems to be fine so which was one of my things i put in my terms and conditions saying look you want a combi um this is really what you're looking at because the flow rate is amazing here the pressure standing pressure is pretty low it's two bar working pressure is about a quarter of a bar um, but it works really well and um i thought about if i increase the uh the size of the hot and colds um it will help out and it has massively 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 so um, yeah, just a little trick there. I've also run 28 mil gas all the way down to the boiler, right the way from the meter. The old gas has been capped off and killed. Um, so that's all done. The terms and conditions about, you know, customers want a specific product 
and you are going to go with it because it's the cheaper option or it's what they want, or whatever, make sure you mention um, about, especially if you're converting conventional or combi changeover, system update, things like existing old taps. You can see these taps are pretty old. Both the tap, um, tap connectors started dripping afterwards. Very, 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 very slowly, but they were. So I've replaced them. I'm not charging to do that because I noticed it and I could do it. I needed to put a new diaphragm and high pressure injector into the toilets, both toilets, because they both been shut off. And the shower wouldn't work. So that's fit a new shower. Obviously that I'm not including in my, uh, my original estimate. This is an extra. And I've said I can across here because all the grout was cracked, which I've done another short video, probably on something different for Alan, but yeah, new shower. So make sure you're putting it in your terms and conditions. You could have a leak on a radiator, you could have a leak on some pipe, you could fill up the system, it could take two days or three days or a week, the pressure could drop. This was the old shower. To be honest, I never expected it to be able to take mains pressure off, it's been sat there with tank fed only. Um, but it was only dripping a little bit. The main thing was it would not give any hot water, would not let any hot through. Um, I disconnected it from here and checked a few bits, but it's old. So new shower has gone in with another new Myra, but the 722 lasted 40 years. Well, I think the property has been empty for a couple of years, so just under 40 years. But yeah, there we go. Make sure you mention things in your terms and conditions, because that will get you out of the poo if you ever get an awkward customer. Cheers. Milwaukee Tools. Just a very quick um, video review. I know I did a little video for Alan the other day about a cheap green laser level that I bought from eBay. Generally, I don't like buying cheaper tools, but I thought I'd try it just for fun. Um, but I, I'm a big believer in buy cheap, buy twice. I had my original one of these, and it was about 11 months old, maybe. Yeah, about 11 months old, and 10 or 11 months old, and I had an issue with it. But because I'm a good boy, and if I can find my iPad I've thrown over there, um, because I'm a good boy, and I do register all my tools for their warranty, I don't just rely on um, things to naturally happen, I registered my tools, which was that one there, or that, that one there. I registered it all as, as I registered my batteries and my tools, had a problem, went onto Milwaukee's website, it's really easy, so you just go on, have a look at what, what tool you've got, and let's say there's a battery that's playing up, you click repair. Um, talks about you know, batteries and things, but let's say it was, oh no, a tool. Circular saw, click repair. Now my iPad's playing up. But anyway, you click repair, go through it. It's really, really easy to do. I sent this away, and I think it's only one company in the UK. It was CJ Sinclair Limited. Um, send it away. You print off the postage label, package it up, send it away. They look at it, they repair it and send it back. In this occasion, they sent me a replacement. because obviously, for some reason, beyond economical repair or what have you. And they sent me a brand new one in the post. Dead easy, dead simple. That's the difference between your cheap stuff and your, well, let's be honest, expensive kit. Or, you know, more money's <laughs> worth of kit. Milwaukee, thank you for making the transition transition wrong word i'm tired i'm still in my work clothes look thank you for making the whole process of having a in warranty call so easy because it really was easy all i had to do was go online create the label send it off and they sent me a new one back or you know they would have sent me a repaired one dead simple no quibble and that's why you get the decent gear for me it's Milwaukee every time no i'm not getting paid any money but i like to give um Good reviews when I get good service. Thank you very much. So I've just removed this off the top of a chimney pot. The There was a gas fire, outset gas fire. In fact, that gas fire over there being used. Is this okay to use on top of a chimney? Um, if so, why is it? If not, why not? So... Why would have this been used? Why would have it been used on top of a chimney? Okay, serving that gas fire. That's the fire, that's the boiler, fire. Um, why would have it have been used? And is it okay to be used for a gas fire? If so, why is it okay? 
And if it's not okay, why is it not okay to be used on top of a chimney? Just another quick short clip for you. If you look inside here, you can see all the shale in there, look. Absolutely shed loads. And this is in the meter box. But um, have a little look. I'm replacing the gas, whole new 28mm gas run anyway on this boiler change, conventional to combi. Um, but if you've got problems with boilers, with low pressure or locking out at odd times, um, check the inlet to the gas valve. Make sure it's not full of shale, give it a little scrape out. Normally a little gauze filter on the gas valves, you can very, very, very gently scrape it out with a pin or something. But yeah, just keep it simple, stupid. Don't always look for faults that may not be there. If it's acting like it's low on pressure, just check for some simple things because quite often you'll find it in the actual gas pipe. Thank you very much for that, Elliot. Um, if anybody else has got any videos, then please send them in. As always, if you put a thumbs up on video, really appreciate that. But if you've got any videos, I'll add my WhatsApp details below. Um, just a, a little bit of an announcement. I will not be doing any more videos now with Viva Training Academy. So Viva's got their own channel now on, on, um, on YouTube and they're going to do their own videos and put them up on their own channel. They want to build their own channel up. Um, so yeah, so that's what they're going to do. So if you want to see any more of them type of videos, then please click on to Viva Training Academy YouTube channel. But on this channel, um, I've got lots and lots of new videos come in i've got some um some more companies that want to get involved and help out new trainees so hopefully it'll be really good going forward um but yeah got any comments put them below and thanks for watching